This week, New York's Attorney General gave notice that she is ready for Trump's October 2nd fraud trial buried. In the notice was a threat. She may seek new penalties against Trump and the Trump Organization for the spoliation of evidence as one potential penalty. Trump's judge could draw an adverse inference from any AWOL documents at Mar-a-Lago. It's the documents he kept that got Donald Trump in trouble, but in New York, the former president now faces the risk of new penalties for documents he allegedly failed to keep. Buried in a ready-for-trial notice filed this week by New York Attorney General Letitia James is a warning. She may ask the judge in Trump's October 2nd fraud trial to punish the former president for the spoliation of evidence as defined under New York case law. Spoliation is the intentional failure to preserve documents or other evidence for pending or reasonably foreseeable litigation. Potential penalties for spoliation include fines and a contempt of court ruling, but a finding of Spoliation can lead to still more serious consequences. It would allow a judge to hold any missing documents against the party that failed to turn them over. The dreaded adverse inference penalty. It's the dreaded adverse inference penalty. Something Trump would not want to suffer in this high-stakes trial. As he fights a $250 million civil fraud lawsuit that seeks to run his company out of New York at great personal and financial cost if spoliation is proven. New York Supreme Court Justice Arthur Ang Oro and could infer, in reaching his verdict, that any evidence the defendants kept from the Attorney General would have been harmful to the defense. This would absolutely tip the scales in favor of the government. Former New York Assistant Attorney General Kenneth Ford McCallion said of the potential impact of James proving Trump or his co-defendants withheld evidence. It would allow an inference of guilt and allow the judge to interpret the missing documents in the worst possible light, said McCallion, who heads McCallion Associates and is the author of Profiles in Cowardice in the Trump era. Nobody goes about destroying evidence that's in their favor. James lawyers may also ask Ang Oro and to draw a similar adverse inference from the more than 400 times that Trump pleaded the fifth at a deposition a year ago, and the more than 500 times that his co-defendants in the lawsuit, son Eric Trump and ex-CFO Alan Weisselberg, also pleaded the fifth. A spokeswoman for the Attorney General has said that Trump was more forthcoming while answering questions this past April. During an 8-hour deposition due over in James' office discovery is complete however discovery in this matter is complete. Kevin C. Wallace, a lead attorney for James' lawsuit, told the judge in this week's ready for trial notice, indicating that each side has now received the entirety of the other side's trial evidence however. Wallace continued. OAG reserves its right to seek relief after trial relating to the defendant's spoliation of evidence OAG is short for Office of the Attorney General, what relief might be sought, for what missing documents, and against which of the trial's defendants, is not specified in the notice, but over the past two years, Trump is the one defendant in the lawsuit who has been singled out repeatedly by the attorney. General's lawyers and by Ang Oro and for failing to comply with subpoenas for his personal business documents. In November, Ang Oro and ordered an independent monitor to watch over the Trump organization after the attorney. General's office successfully argued that the company continues to engage in fraud documents. What documents? Out of some 900,000 documents that the Trump organization has turned over to James. In response to her subpoenas, only 10 have come from Trump's personal files. Despite the fact that he ran the multi-billion dollar real estate and golf resort business in some instances, it's been pulling teeth to get documents Wallace complained during a hearing in April of last year. In fighting any spoliation accusation, Trump may argue, as his lawyers did back then, that he simply had no documents to turn over. But last time Trump tried that argument, Ang Oro and still hit him with 110,000 in fines and a contempt.
of court finding the contempt order was lifted two months later, after prosecutors received affidavits from Trump and other key Trump org executives swearing that his personal business documents had been thoroughly searched for in all their possible storage locations but simply didn't exist, these so-called Jackson affidavits could come back to bite Trump in a spoliation battle, as admissions that sought after documents were not mislaid they're gone. Trump stick IES situation, as CEO of a multi-billion dollar real estate company, Trump should have had many, many more than just 10 personal business documents to turn over. The Attorney General's lawyers have argued after all. Trump's own top corporate lawyer, Alan Garten, said so himself two summers ago. Garten testified in response to an AG subpoena that Trump regularly generates handwritten documents. James' office said in a 2020 defiling, he told the AG's office that his boss, who famously shuns computers, a mails and texts, routinely used post-it notes and that notorious black sharpie to mark up appraisal drafts and other key documents. Garten testified that there were file cabinets at the Trump Organization containing Mr. Trump's files, that Mr. Trump had assistants who maintained the files on his behalf, that he received and maintained hard copy documents, and that he used post-it notes to communicate with employees. These documents would then be stored in Trump C. Iran, or chronological files, which were kept in dozens of file cabinets in Trump Tower on Manhattan S. Fifth Avenue. Trump's top corporate lawyer testified. According to court filings, none of these sticky notes, and nothing approaching the contents of multiple file cabinets, was ever turned over to the AGS office in response to their subpoenas for Trump's personal business records. James lawyers complained last year. Spoliation would be no slam dunk to prove, proving intentional spoliation and triggering that painful adverse inference penalty would require clearing a high legal bar for James lawyers. Who would bear the burden of proof sanctions are only warranted if the party responsible for failing to turn over evidence knowingly destroyed or hid that evidence. According to New York case law, mere negligence as in Whoops! Trump is really bad at keeping records, is not enough the Attorney General would have to convince Ang Oro and that sometime, after the summer of 2021. When Garten described all those file cabinets, the cabinets Sharpie scrawled. Sticky note bedecked contents were willfully hidden or destroyed. Possible defenses include Trump blaming any missing evidence on his company's haphazard document retention habits. The Trump Organization actually had no set document retention policy. His longtime executive assistant, Ro Nagraf, told the Attorney General's office in a deposition last year, but if Trump tries to claim, as he did in his own Jackson affidavit last year, that his assistants handled all of his filing, then Graf's testimony might contradict him typically. She didn't even read Trump's documents let alone file them. The AGS lawyers say she told them I didn't think it was my position to look inside. Graf testified of the manila folders of business documents that crossed the former president's Trump Tower desk all day long. In the years before he left for Washington, a bunch of issues high burden of proof aside. This week's filing shows that James lawyers are not letting the missing documents matter go ill be. Frank. Wallace had told the judge more than a year ago, during the same April 2020 to hearing, where he likened getting documents from Trump to pulling teeth. Trump lawyer Alina H. Abba had just said for the umpteenth time that Trump had nothing more to turn over. When Wallace's tone turned ominous, if that's all there is, he told the judge. It raises a bunch of other issues, a spokesperson for James and a lawyer for Trump declined to comment on any potential spoliation battle at stake for Trump into months James 200-page lawsuit filed in September of last year, alleges that Trump and top executives, including his two eldest sons, routinely overstated or understated the value of company assets 
these valuations were off by billions of dollars cumulatively over a decade. Trump or his son signed off on this phony math in financial documents used to secure hundreds of millions in loans and tax breaks. James alleges Ivanka Trump was originally a defendant, but was removed from the case in June after a state appellate court found that James' claims against her were too old at the October trial. Lawyers will ask Ang Oro and to impose a 250 million penalty and to let James drive the company out of New York by permanently revoking its corporate charter. If the relief sought by the lawsuit is granted, Trump and his two eldest sons would also be barred from ever running a business in the state again, and they would be barred for five years from buying property in the state or borrowing from a new York registered bank. Trump and his co-defendants in the civil case have denied any fraud, instead insisting that the valuation of property is complicated and subjective banks were happy to lend him money over the years, and they made a lot of money doing so. The former president has also argued. Trump's lawyers have said repeatedly that their client is looking forward to educating James' office at trial on the extraordinary success of his multi-billion dollar company.